Hey, birds and bees, hit that like button or I will step on you. And uh, this is my Colonel Sanders facial hair tutorial. You will need crepe wool or creep wool or crepe, crepe. You'll need this wool. And when you get it, it'll come all like wrinkly, dinkly like this. It'll come all smushed up. And so we're going to have to straighten that out so we don't end up with a curly beard. Unless you want a curly beard, in which case go for it. But I'm just going to take my regular hair straighteners and I'm just literally just going to run it over until it's uh, straighter than I am. The joke is that I'm pansexual. Also, I can do cool ASMR with my new microphone. You might need more than you think, so I'm going to do that amount. And yes, it will molt, bits will fall off, and that's that's something you're going to have to get used to. Um, you're going to be hairy as hell after this. Is is hell hairy? I feel I feel like hell's hairy. I feel like hell is when you have a bit of hair on your tongue and you can't get it off. That's hell. As you can see, Krabby Wool is just like loads of different strands of hair and I'm going to show you how to make it not as clunky donkey. Also, I uh, just stuck a hat on. There is no reason for this. You don't have to do this. I just, uh, I just don't like how my hair's sitting right now. That's about it. So I'm just holding it up to my face to kind of work out the length that I need. I'm going to make it a little bit longer than I need and I'm just going to cut it off there. Just straight across normal scissors, nothing fancy. Now that we have a clump of hair, I'm going to start pulling some bits out at the edge like that and then overlapping and this is to sort of separate the fibers so that you look more realistic because facial hair isn't like you know head hair it's not all gathered together it's very wispy um, during this process if you have two different colors of crepe wool or more you can use this to mix them together so you get a more natural look because a lot of older men's beard have like the white the gray the ginger depending you know on his hair color but yeah this is pretty much what you're going to want to do is just pull out the ends and overlap it, focus on the clunky bits until it all looks like it's separated and then to finish you kind of just grab what is hanging off over the end, overlap it and then bin anything that's stuck to you. In order to get it to sit decently on my face I'm going to be cutting it straight so that I can just control where it goes on my face instead of like that. You can do this as you separate bits so you can grab a clunk of it and then cut it straight across and decide where you're going to stick it on um, or you can do it as a group like this but you might have to cut it again. I'm just, I kind of rushed this step. As for how we're going to get it stuck on our face, you can either use spirit gum, um, which I recommend getting a remover for if you're going to use spirit gum because it's gross and very strong, or you can use my very nasty um, bottle of eyelash glue that really needs a clean. But uh, yeah, I'm using spirit gum whenever I want it to last for a very long time, like if I'm going to be on stage for a performance, and then I will use eyelash glue if I'm just doing it for TikTok or something purely for the fact that the residue is easier to remove afterwards as well. We are going to start underneath our chin and work our way forwards because no facial hair starts right on the edge um, because it's just for TikTok so I'm not going as far back as I usually would and we're just going to work in like line segments so I've done a little bit there then we're going to take the main bulk of hair that we've cut off we're going to take off a little section from it um, it's trial and error really as to how much you'll need and this is where you'd cut it straight normally if you hadn't cut it straight across first. Wait till it's tacky and then push it in. Just just push it on, push it in, spread it out evenly, you know, get it how you like it. And as you can see, this is very, very sticky to your fingers and it's a bit clumpy in one area and not the other, but because we're going to be layering up, that bit's going to be hidden, so I didn't bother fixing it. And then you just kind of go from there. You work your way over to the main source of chin I guess. Uh, I recommend having pictures in front of you of the beard that you're trying to replicate because facial hair grows certain ways on a face so it's very good to know what it is you're trying to replicate whereas I had the animated Colonel Sanders from the dating sim game in front of me because I'd rather look at that than the actual Colonel Sanders. Now it's time I must ask you a question. I'm sorry. But yeah for the mustache pretty much I'm gonna do one side at a time because I guess the only way I know how to do it is it grows out from each side. I don't think it does grow properly in the middle bit. I'm not entirely sure. I don't study mustaches. I didn't do my research. I literally just went, oh, Colonel Sanders has this. I'll do this. And um, I didn't start at the back and work my way forward like I should have done. But I, yeah, you'd basically just do it as you do the beard. Um, you get it in your mouth a lot more 
and at this point your fingers are probably sticky. Um, you could use the back of a comb to press the hair in because I've seen some people do that but I didn't have one to hand so I was literally just using my hands which meant they got very sticky which meant hair was coming out everywhere but as long as you don't get it in your nose like I do and in your mouth like I do then you're doing great um, or you can just trim around that area so it doesn't matter too much now I'm just doing the other side doing it a little bit better than I did the previous one and um, increasing the beard at the bottom because I felt like it was too thin at the sides and didn't look natural so I'm just gonna add a little bit either side now it's time to cut. I'm just going to be cutting away the flyaway bits that are around my mouth and being very very careful and resting the blunt bit of the scissors against me so that the sharp bits do not cut me. Now it is time to style. I'm putting the scissors at an angle and then trimming as I move the scissors down um, to get the shape of the moustache that I want. Uh, this is all, I guess, trial and error. Um, you can always take it off and do it again. Uh, but the beard is the easy part. The moustache is the bit you try and need to I need to get symmetrical but it doesn't matter too much you can always style it with wax if that's the kind of thing you want to do like you just would a wig once you are happy with them and they're somewhat even you can spread them out or you can pinch them together you can just pull the bits at the sides to get rid of any loose bits um, so if you're not stuck enough down you might end up pulling the whole thing off so just be very gentle and try and avoid it being in your mouth because no one likes hair in the mouth with a beard I do at an angle going down to the middle point and then I stop and I do the other side the same way I guess the opposite way kind of like mirrored um, just be very very rough and gradual with it don't you know don't cut straight across you see how sharp this is but what I can do then is cut the scissors up into it to make it not look like it's straight lined across and just thin it out a little bit you will you will molt so enjoy that all on your lap or table or whatever's directly underneath you that's pretty much it on putting it on my lap now looks like i've uh, had a cat without the joys of being able to pet a cat which is really depressing this is me after filming deciding we're going to show you how to take it off um it doesn't really hurt it more just pulls the skin it doesn't like pull it like waxing or anything you're literally just peeling it off with eyelash glue i was using a tissue just to get it off and a bit of a makeup wipe but I ended up with loads of sticky residue afterwards still I used um, two different cleansers that I had downstairs which didn't seem to do too much and then I used like an exfoliation scrub and that got it straight off um, so I recommend using exfoliation scrub or you know googling how to get eyelash glue off because I didn't even think about doing that I was just like I'm just gonna scrub my face with various chemicals and see what happens safe chemicals safe face chemicals you know like face washes and stuff but yeah the exfoliating one definitely worked best I think but you'll end up with very messy face and stuff so yeah enjoy that that's that's great for you and if you can see it on the camera but yeah it was still there was still like residue left behind and little bits of hair but once most of the hair was off it was just the sticky gunky residue to wash off and it was pretty much done so that's my very, very lazy tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Give it a like and subscribe, follow all that lovely shiz and ta-ra.